evening. We will then be able to check uh, present. So let's actually get, um, if ever there's any apologies. Uh, Chair, we will flag the agenda. The apologies that we have is for Mrs. Mrs. Pando, Minister of International Relations. We have yes. for Dr. Mukizi, Minister of Health. We have Ambassador Nlozi, who's the acting DG of Durko, and Dr. Bujalezi, the DG for Department of Health. They were not able to be part of the meeting chair um, because of prior commitments, but we do have the attendance of the, like, like the member indicated, the Deputy Minister, Ms. Masheko Dlamini, as well as the, our Minister, Mr. Mr. Patel, who is on the platform chair. We have an apology of, from Mrs. Yaku Chair, who was not able to attend on our, um, on, for our committee. That's the only apology. And Mr. McPherson has indicated that he will be attending in the late chair. Those are the apologies, Chair, that I have. And you do have the list of, 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 of ministers on, and, and officials that are in attendance, Chair. Okay. Let's actually okay. just, before we look at, at the adoption of the okay. agenda before. Chair, Mrs. All Hammond, right, Chair. let's hear there's a. Uh, uh, sorry for not putting up my hand. Sorry for not putting up my hand, but I okay. think our uh, EM Gina is also on the platform. Yes, yes, correct, Chair. Okay. All right. So let's just check. Uh, that's Deputy Minister Gina, you said. Le let's uh, just uh, check because uh, from. The uh, information I have, the Minister uh, Patel will be joining uh, acting DG Mabitse Thompson uh, will be uh, joining us and DDG uh, Karim, uh, Ambassador uh, Karim will be joining us. Uh, there's also attendance uh, which was actually raised earlier of uh, Deputy Minister uh, Masiho Lamini, uh, that was actually uh, who's present and uh, with us uh, today. So maybe we can actually just uh, check uh, then uh, with the agenda that is actually uh, flighted uh, so that we can be able to actually get the meeting to, um, yes. Chairperson, Mr. 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 Minister Patel raised his hand. Chair, I think there's Deputy Minister he raised his hand, Chair. Oh, okay. Let's see it, Deputy Minister. Minister. Oh, Minister. Minister Patel. Uh, good morning, uh, Chairperson. Good morning to all the uh, honorable members and the staff. Chairperson, I understand my office has attended my apologies uh, to leave at quarter to 11 for an 11 o'clock uh, commitment. Okay, no, thank you. Thank you very much, because I think uh, we do have uh, Ms. Uh, Aneli Swakwele, at DDG from HELP, and Ms. Uh, uh, Khadija Jumalodin, uh, acting uh, director, director for affordable medicines who are actually from health, who are part of the team that is joining us today. Maybe for everyone, let's actually have a look at the presentation uh, of the agenda, which we can look at uh, for adoption. Uh, we will we'll actually be looking at the two parts mm -hmm. presentation. Um, the Department of Trade and Industry on the current negotiation re in relation to the waiver of uh, COVID-19 vaccine and uh, the input also by the Department of International Relation and cooperation in the current negotiation in relation to the waiver. Um, let's check if ever there's a agreement that we can actually proceed with the uh, agenda as proposed. Uh, honorable members. Chair, we have Mr. Mbuyani and Mrs. Hermans, Chair. Honorable Mbuyani. Uh, Chairperson, good morning. Uh, once again, good morning to the colleagues. Uh, Chairperson, arise for the adoption of the agenda. Thank you. Okay. L let's get a uh, uh, seconder. Chair, we have Mrs. Hermans' hands raised, Chair. 
Honorable Hammonds. Thank you, Chair. I second the adoption of the agenda as tabled. Well, obviously, let's also check. Uh, maybe there might be an objection. Is there any objection to the adoption of the agenda? So in the absence, let's actually then just say uh, before we uh, actually... Uh, sorry, sorry, okay. so, sorry, Chair. Yes. There, there's a hand. So, so I can yes, yes, yes. Chair. Yeah. No, I don't have a problem with the move in the second, but I want to check, Chair. Uh, Today we have been a plenary at 11 uh, of the National Treasurer. Now I see our agenda goes beyond that. Uh, oh. Now, what would be the situation? I would want to go over and okay. look in the site level. So, okay, okay. No, no. I, th I think let's try and see if we can be able to do most of what we need to do uh, before eleven. We, we won't actually maybe take much time on the issue of uh, procedure. Then we'll ask uh, the two presentation of the minister. I won't go much on the procedural issues. I will actually take it as uh, you know understood because I actually thought the one will actually have to speak to that. So I think uh, let's actually agree that our meeting is two hours than three hours. And uh, I think, uh, Minister Patel, you did suggest that um, you need to leave by, leave by quarter to 11. Can I actually ask that uh, then we, we proceed? Because obviously we did circulate. I think all members did receive the concept document. I thought we were able just to take uh, five minutes, uh, Secretariat, on that concept document before we actually get to the... Um, to presentation for from the ministers, from the departments, and uh, be able to actually then uh, proceed with the discussions uh, beyond that point. Unless there's a different suggestions, uh, portfolio committee joined. Are there any further suggestions? If not, okay. can I then? Uh, yes. Jim, may I propose that given the time constraints that we have, is that we move straight with the presentation from the ministers, um, members did receive the concept document. So I would assume they would have studied it. Um, just given the time constraints that we're having, Chair, that we proceed direct, directly to the presentation from both DTIC and Durko Chair. I think that's in order. Um, let's actually ask then uh, Minister Patel. DTIC to actually take us through the presentation. I'm sure everyone has received that. Can we fly the presentation, Minister? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairperson. And um, once again, uh, good morning to all the honorable members and the staff of the departments and of parliament. Uh, the um, uh, presentation will be flighted now. It should be on the screen shortly. And I want to thank the uh, members of parliament for the opportunity to uh, provide a brief uh, presentation on the work that the uh, DTIC is doing together with other government departments uh, on matters relating to uh, what has become known as the TRIPS waiver. If I could ask if the screen could be full, uh, full size and if we could go then to the next slide. The next slide, uh, Honorable Chairperson, uh, just sets out the contents. So to save time, I'm going to go straight to the uh, slide number three, which sets out a challenge that uh, COVID-19 represents a major global public health and economic crisis that official figures indicate uh, about uh, three and a half million deaths globally from COVID-19 that uh, work done on the gap between 
the number of people who have been declared to have died as a result of COVID and the number of people above the baseline who have died indicate uh, that the real death rate is estimated to be between 7 and 13 million people that as one instrument and one means to address this, we need a, ma a mass vaccination program across the world to break the global transmission chain. That we have insufficient production and that this is compounded by inequitable delivery of vaccine. It poses a threat to lives and livelihoods and to global economic recovery. We share with the committee the estimates by the World Bank of the economic cost of the pandemic and that the number of deaths and the impact on livelihoods will continue to be negative uh, as the pandemic continues. The next slide continues with the challenges. And we're just waiting for the slides to uh, be changed. Uh, can get the person dealing with the slides to move them for the minister? Please, can you move to the next slide? Okay, going to slide number four, we seem to have lost the uh, slide connection, uh, Chairperson. A copy of the presentation has, uh, I take it, been circulated uh, either last night or this morning. We can wait for the uh, presenter to get back uh, with these slides, Chair, or if you like, I can continue uh, based on the circulated document. May you pro proceed, Minister, but you can just say which slides you're looking at and then you can speak to that. We'll try and actually maybe through our gadgets, if possible, Honourable Members, apologies for that, um, actually be able to scan through that uh, as well because we, this uh, presentation was circulated. Can we actually proceed like that until maybe we get hold of those who are running the process, Honorable Minister, if you can continue. Thank you. Just uh, beyond what's the slide and then we actually can be able to connect. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Slide number four continues with a challenge and it says, the major challenge is the shortage of supplies of vaccines and inequitable access to available vaccines. We make the point that unless manufacturing of vaccines is ramped up and supplies distributed more evenly, it will be at least another two to three years. And there are some projections significantly longer than this before a sufficient number of people, particularly in developing countries, are vaccinated. And this impacts obviously on lives lost, but it also gives the virus uh, considerable time to spread and to mutate into more deadly or contagious strains. And to illustrate the size of the problem, uh, by the end of this month uh, that we've just completed now, 1.8 billion vaccine doses uh, have been uh, administered globally with only uh, half a billion people, less than half a billion people fully vaccinated, meaning for most vaccines, they would have taken both doses. And about 75% of all vaccines have been delivered to just 10 countries. Slide number five will set out the objectives of the waiver. And I should indicate that at the World Trade Organization, there is a, an agreement called the TRIPS Agreement, which stands for the Trade-Related Intellectual Pro Property uh, Agreement. And that regulates the rights of uh, patent holders and copyright holders. And in order to overcome the supply challenge, South Africa and India have proposed a waiver of certain provisions of the TRIPS Agreement at the World Trade Organization. The objective of the wave is to promote universal access by removing the legal impediments to sharing and to using intellectual property uh, for the production of vaccines, for diagnostics, and for therapeutics. 
in uh, our view, the waiver would signal a multilateral undertaking that intellectual property rights rules will not constitute a barrier to boosting global vaccine production. It could encourage, enhance regional and international collaboration for the development, production and supply of medical products and would improve supply and access not only in the countries that would produce, but also with countries that uh, have insufficient or no manufacturing capacity. Slide number six goes to the waiver discussions and it provides just a little snapshot of uh, the, the waiver discussions. The African Union, uh, all the countries of the African Union have supported the waiver at its February session this year. We've also held discussions through something called the TRIPS Council of the World Trade Organization, considering the principle of a waiver from two co-sponsors, that is South Africa and India, the number of formal co-sponsors has grown and many countries have come out in support of the waiver in addition to those who are uh, co-sponsors. Parliamentarians across the world have supported the call for a waiver from uh, countries in de developing countries as well as developed countries. As a former heads of state, Nobel laureates and civil society leaders. South Africa and India are now seeking to build wide support across the developing and also the developed world for the waiver as part of the global campaign for vaccine access. Slide number seven identifies what is needed uh, in order to address successful increase in global supply and uh, this includes access to intellectual property, which is the fundamental issue that uh, waivers deal with, or this waiver will deal with, uh, the technology transfer and sharing of know-how, and the financing of plant expansion, or the repurposing of existing plants. Uh, we've all made the point at the World Trade Organization that this need to be linked to more equitable supply arrangements including rights to distribution for pharmaceutical companies in developing uh, countries, uh, especially on the African continent. Slide number eight addresses the call for a COVID-19 package. And uh, it sets out the overall vision of uh, what uh, is required in March uh, this year uh, I was asked to address uh, the uh, meeting of the World Trade Organization uh, and on behalf of the South African government, we proposed a package of five measures, what we call the COVID-19 package at the World Trade Organization. The first one is scaled up production, working with pharmaceutical companies with a transfer of technology, the production of the drug substance and the production of the vaccine through a full and finished process together with distribution rights. So covering the entire um, uh, production chain and the distribution chain. The second uh, component is a waiver of IP rights in specified areas to enable production without the veto uh, that IP holders have in terms of the existing agreement. The third one is transparency transparency by uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, uh, and countries on contract terms and on price fairness and stability. And that comes out because a number of pharmaceutical companies have non-disclosure agreements and they lock many countries into these. Uh, and of course, public interest requires transparency on these. The fourth area is uh, an agreement not to resort to vaccine nationalism through export controls agreed at global level so that everybody across the world uh, agree that we need to make uh, the free movement of vaccines and uh, related uh, products uh, uh, as easy as possible. And the fifth one is an automatic provision that would have to be negotiated uh, in future for TRIPS, uh, 
uh, to apply in uh, future pandemics. Now, this last one uh, is not part of the waiver itself. If we can just go back to slide number eight, because the, uh, the current request <clears throat> for legal reasons is for a, for a waiver of certain articles of uh, the TRIPS agreement. The concept of a waiver is not new in the World Trade Organization. There are waivers to uh, uh, different parts of WTO agreements that have been um, uh, consented to in the past. Uh, and this package of five areas uh, constitute uh, something that uh, a growing number of countries are now supporting. For example, France has come out very strongly in favor of transparency. Um, as I will say later, uh, the United States has come out in favor of a waiver of IP rights uh, for vaccine. Um, Germany has come out in favor of scaled up production on a voluntary basis with transfer of technology. And it's, uh, most countries are agreeing to not resort to vaccine nationalism. And there's growing interest in the South African proposal that the TRIPS agreement itself needs to be revisited, which of course will take uh, this is a series of legal steps to go through so that there's an automatic provision that can be activated in any future pandemic. So um, uh, our uh, request has been that this package be taken as a whole because they reinforce each other and they would constitute a significant step forward in making greater levels of production available. Slide number nine uh, addresses the uh, capacity enhancement. And we've just given a few examples here because together with the discussions at uh, the World Trade Organization, we also need to address the capacity <clears throat> to utilize the, the uh, uh, commitments and understandings that we hope to achieve uh, through the WTO waiver. Uh, Aspen, a South African pharmaceutical company, is currently producing the J&J vaccine in Kribeja. It's doing so on a contract basis, and it is open and ready to produce the drug substance itself, which is the raw materials that is utilized and to undertake distribution of product. And uh, it uh, uh, is in discussion uh, to, uh, to achieve technology transfer and licensing agreements. BioVac, which is a Cape Town-based company with significant shielding by the South African government, is able to produce vaccines, is producing uh, non-COVID um, uh, uh, vaccines and medication, and it's engaged with global vaccine uh, intellectual property holders to see how we can utilize the uh, capacity at BioVac. Uh, we make the point that both countries can do full and integrated production based on the outcome of the WTO talks. Uh, here and there, there would have to be some upgrading of systems, but they both are quite keen to uh, be able to uh, be fully integrated uh, production units. We're looking at other options uh, for new production, including efforts by uh, Minister Nzimandi, the Minister of Science and Innovation, to mobilize local know-how, to bring in more South African scientists and virologists and others to see how we can pull our knowledge uh, to help uh, strengthen capabilities locally. And then President Ramaphosa is promoting African vaccine production as an explicit objective, looking at manufacturing facilities across the African continent, not only South Africa, and he's made the point repeatedly that it's not only South Africa that has capacity, there are also other African countries, South Africa at the moment through Aspen has the most advanced facility that is able on scale uh, to be um, producing, but there are capacities elsewhere uh, uh, on the continent. Slide number 10 deals with the scope and duration of the waiver. The uh, obligations uh, uh, that we, we seek to, to have waived uh, under TRIPS include ones dealing with copyright, industrial designs, patents, and something called undisclosed information. The scope covers health products and technologies that are necessary uh, to, to treat uh, COVID-19. 
uh, and uh, we give a, an illustrative list there. Uh, we've proposed that the waiver be enforced for a, a period of at least three years from the date of decision and that there be a mechanism to review the circumstances justifying the waiver. And if the circumstances cease to exist, in other words, uh, we've been able to um, contain uh, effectively the spread of the virus, uh, then uh, a date of termination would be uh, uh, determined. Um, and then we make the point that duration has to be practical for manufacturing to be viable. Slide 11 deals with the state of play. Uh, we began these discussions uh, uh, some while back. In fact, South Africa raised the matter of the relationship between trade and COVID-19 at the G20 Trade and Investment Minister's meeting in March last year. The waiver proposal was formally introduced by South Africa and India on the 2nd of October at the World Trade Organization. Currently, 63 WTO members have co-sponsored the proposal and about 50 others have indicated their support. Uh, the co-sponsors have presented an updated proposal on the 21st of May and a further TRIPS Council meeting was held yesterday to assess progress to get uh, different countries to table uh, their, their thoughts. Those who have not yet co-sponsored uh, the proposal were uh, given an opportunity to set out their views. Uh, slide number 12 continues with a state of play. The president has engaged heads of state in a number of fora and bilaterally on the waiver proposal. More recently, as uh, members of parliament would know from the live coverage from the union buildings, uh, it included last week's state visit discussions with President Macron from France. Uh, Minister Pando, the Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, has actively engaged counterparts uh, across the world in support of the waiver. Much of our effort has been to try not to win the support of more developed countries uh, so that we can build the necessary consensus in the World Trade Organization. And on the um, 30th of March, I had met with a new US trade representative, which is the cabinet uh, uh, secretary for trade uh, in the United States to outline the rationale for the waiver request. On the 5th of May, the United States gave its support for the waiver proposal. It became the first developed country to do so, and it has subsequently supported text-based discussions on the vaccines. This was a very, very significant step forward in building greater levels of uh, uh, global consensus on the need for a waiver. A wide range of developing countries from uh, our continent, from Asia and from Latin America have backed the waiver. New Zealand has come out in support of the waiver. Uh, Australia, we've met with the Australian minister and uh, uh, there's been some guarded support from Australia and Canada for, uh, the, uh, for the waiver. The European Union members do not have a common view on the proposal as yet. They've tabled their, their thoughts uh, uh, to us uh, more recently. And a vote was held in the European Parliament a week ago in support uh, of the waiver where the majority of European members of Parliament have now come out to support the South Africa-India proposal. And uh, I should also indicate that the European Union itself have now recognized that the existing flexibilities in TRIPS uh, are inadequate. And uh, so there's, everybody agrees that the current legal framework as it stands is not going to enable uh, humanity to, to increase the supply of vaccines to get to the, the goal of universal access uh, of vaccines. Slide number 13 are the next steps. So the, the, the key thing that we're seeking now to, to get agreement on is to commence with um, uh, text-based negotiations on the details of the waiver. But to do so, we also require broad consensus among WTO members. The, 
the way in which the World Trade Organization works is, uh, by and large, uh, its decisions are made uh, uh, through consensus. And we still have now to, uh, to do a little bit more work uh, with uh, the European Union uh, to, uh, to build uh, the necessary consensus. And the president's step uh, in, in hosting a meeting with the president of France was a key element of that, as has been uh, discussions with Germany. And we hope uh, next week to have, uh, well, in this month, in June, to have further discussions, uh, including uh, uh, with uh, other uh, key players. Further efforts are underway to build consensus on a meaningful outcome that is reached on an expedited basis. The big challenge with the World Trade Organization talks is because they cover more than 150, um, uh, more than 160 countries, they tend to be very, very slow and uh, they can take years normally on other matters. And here we are trying to get a short um, text, a meaningful outcome and one that is done very rapidly. Key issues uh, that we anticipate, but of course everybody will put forward their own views, would be the duration of the waiver, how, how long it would last, its scope, which includes whether it would cover all of the proposed product range that um, South Africa and India have put forward, and the identified categories of intellectual property that would be, would be waived. In parallel with this, we're in discussions with pharmaceutical companies and with governments bilaterally to address the wider obstacles uh, to, or, or the obstacles to support for the waiver and the scaling up of production. There's a G7 meeting, which is the, um, the seven uh, uh, countries that uh, group together, seven developed countries that group together in the G7. Uh, they meet in the United Kingdom this month. Uh, President Ramaphosa has been invited to attend, and it's an opportunity to seek developed country support. So uh, what we have to date is an extraordinary coalition of countries that have been mobilized in favor of the proposed waiver, placing health and lives as the top priority. Chairperson, that um, briefly summarizes the uh, state of play on the waiver discussion. Thank you for the opportunity. May I hand back to you? Let's actually get the other presentation, please. Chairperson. Because we actually, yes. Yes, I remember. Um, Chairperson, just for the record, um, the Portfolio Committee on International Relations did not receive the presentations that are being tabled on this meeting, just for record. Thank you. Okay. No, that's fine. Thanks, thanks very much. Uh, we'll uh, uh, go through with that. Thank you very much, Honourable Member. Can I ask that maybe we take uh, the presentation of uh, Dirko? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, if it can be flighted, uh, uh, Deputy Minister, welcome. Well, uh, I think uh, our officials needed to fly it today and I'm just I'm just checking whether they're on online already. Can we get the Dirko um, presentation okay. showed up? Yes. Um, we can actually because the the member has just actually reflected that it was sent out late. Do they do they have the? The presentation? Not sure because you said they didn't receive the presentation. Okay, can you give me two minutes to check the official person? Yeah. Supposed to be joining us now. Chairperson, <coughs> yeah. Chair of, of presentations, Chair, it was forwarded to Dirko's officials to, to distribute to the relevant Dirko uh, um, 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 officials, Chair. So the president, members should have, everybody should have the presentation. Let's just check from members. Um, I think uh, there was actually one member who just spoke and to say they, they, don't, they didn't receive that presentation. 
Yes, it, it was myself, uh, Chairperson. Yes. Honorable uh, member, thank you very much. L let's actually check, uh, because Musane Utaga is too long. I mean, I need to alternate member, but the members of international relations did not receive it. Oh, all the, all the other members didn't receive. Yeah, alternate member of uh, DTIC. Chair, we will address, oh, it. We'll address it and ensure that they have a chair. Okay, that's fine. Um, Deputy, Minister, Deputy Minister will actually then do the introductory part. If we can actually get to assist Secretariat to have the um, uh, projection of the presentation Chair. while it's presented. And then wh wh when we conclude, we will look at the best way forward because it does look like the information haven't gone out uh, earlier as we anticipated. Secretariat? Chair, we were given a name can of we the Matru, that will that will sh um, flight the presentation on behalf of Derko Chair. So I'm not, I don't, I do, I do not know who who will be flighting the presentation, Chair. Okay, can you assist with that, Secretariat, so that at least uh, because I have received that uh, presentation, I'm sure you have it as well. If you can assist to flight it, and the Deputy Minister has just indicated that you. Be making an introductory remarks. Okay, there it is. The deputy minister, we, we do actually have the projection. Um, Thank you. And then the, you, I'm sure it's DM. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll, 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 I'll quickly, because of time, I will not make the introductory remarks. I'll quickly uh, ask you okay. to allow our presenter to present the document. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, most welcome. Can we actually get the presenter to take us through? The presentation is flighted. Can I check uh, with the presenter? If ever he, can, he or she can be able to see the presentation, because I think we can see it. Can we get Jack then to take us through? We actually do have the time constraint. Can we proceed? Well, th thank you very much, Chairperson, because um, the, the, I don't know what's happening with the officials, but I will present the next slide. OK. Yeah, Chairperson, the structure of our presentation is as follows, but we, we, we are not going to present the, the, the background because the minister has also indicated we'll go straight to um, uh, page six of the presentation. On page six of the presentation, uh, Chairperson, is the role of the Department of International Relations and Cooperation. In, in the issue of, of, of the waiver. The Department of, of Trade and Industry, it's, it's, a, it's a leading on this initiative through the participation of South African Trade Mission in Geneva uh, to the World Trade Organization supported by us as the department. So as a department uh, chair, we, we, we have 154 offices representing across the world, either through bilateral embassies, high commissions, consulate, non-residential representation, honorary consulate representation, lies in offices as well as multilateral mission. And as a department, we have effectively used this footprint around the world to conduct lobbying and outreach through, it, through our mission for support of the waiver. The next slide. The department has and continued to utilize the international platform to engage member states through bilateral engagement, as well as international conferences and summits to advance the trip waiver. In addition, during negotiations on international resolution, South Africa has advocated for the inclusion of the reference to the trip waiver. 
As President Ramaphosa Chair is leading a global initiative that is the co-chair of the Act A Facility Council and the African Union COVID-19 champion, it is an opportunity for South Africa to use this platform to call on the international community and all member states to support the TRIP waiver. The next slide, Chair, that uh, our department will continue to reiterate the president's call for support to the African continent in building its health system, including its infrastructure and capacities to mitigate the pandemic. And the department has also used and will continue to use its participation in the G20, G7, BRICS, and other platform to advocate the waiver. The department as well as pos is positioned to understand the political and geopolitical relationship and dynamics with countries and continue to protect and promote South Africa's national interest and foreign policy priorities in line with the department's strategic priorities. The next slide, Chair, is that is the action that is required uh, in terms of uh, advocating for, for the waiver. And of this, uh, a chairperson will require that the priority is a Ghana more co-sponsors in support of the waiver in order to build political pressure at the WTO. As the minister has indicated that number of countries have also co-signed the, the waiver. Then African Caribbean and Pacific and Pacific and members of the Caribbean community and common market have not yet signed onto the waiver proposal. South Africa will continue to use its bilateral missions to target individual members in those groupings and conduct outreach at the highest political level in terms of visiting uh, those countries by our principals, president, deputy president, and our ministers. The next slide, uh, Chair, is the advantage of the waiver. Uh, I, will, I will pass that one because the minister has indicated what will be the advantage of the waiver. We'll go straight to slide number 12, the proposal for support by parliamentary committees. Uh, Chairperson, uh, Parliament, we understand that Parliament is an instrument instrumental in advancing South African priorities through its engagement in the international parliamentary platform that is inter-parliamentary union, as well as through regional and other platforms. That is the Pan-African Parliament that is confused as, as, as you say. It is proposed that the Speaker of Parliament could engage their counterpart on the waiver. And also we feel that as the department that the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee may provide support to this process by engaging its counterparts in both developing and developed countries on the importance and benefit of the supporting the temporarily trip waiver. This intersectoral collaboration will most certainly be welcome and allow a range of stakeholders to understand and appreciate the benefit of this initiative by South Africa and India. On our conclusion, Chair, we understand that not all countries can produce everything by themselves and no single country can sustainably supply the whole world with their existing manufacturing capacity. All efforts to prevent, treat, and contain COVID-19 must be based on the backdrop of human rights principle of international solidarity, cooperation, and assistance. There is no room for nationalism and profitability in decision-making about access to vaccines, essential tests and treatments, and other medical goods services and supplies that are at the heart of the right to the highest attainment, attainable standards of health for all. Therefore, international property rights should not override state obligation to protect and fulfill the right to health. 
which entail providing for human, humanization against major infectious diseases to all without discrimination. I thank you, Chair. And we are sorry about the up and down. Okay, can, can we then agree um, we know that uh, there's uh, lots of issues that haven't actually been managed effectively, but we are in our meeting today. I was thinking it will be helpful just for a few minutes just to check with uh, my colleagues uh, if ever there's any uh, PC portfolio committee chair would like to comment or then the whips would like to comment because I think we need to then to look at the next step before we get any questions or uh, uh, discussion. I was thinking that let's get comments from uh, if ever there's actually any uh, uh, ministry. Health was not actually, did not present. And obviously I think uh, if ever there's any comment from health uh, uh, department, I would actually appreciate that. Then I'll ask if ever there's a colleague of mine, another chair of the portfolio committee present, and then I'll ask for the whip, uh, whips to be able to speak. In that order, can we actually be able to do that? Uh, officials uh, from health, okay. are there any further comments on the discussion and the presentations? Secretary, uh, we do you. have, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chairperson. It's Annelise Watele from the National Department of Health. We did yes. not prepare any presentation. We are just following the, the discussions as they are going along. And if ever there are issues that we need to take home, we will then take it and, 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 and depending on the guidance coming from the committee in terms of the expectation from health. Thanks a lot, Chairperson. Okay, let, let me actually then ask my colleagues, uh, is there a chairperson of peace portfolio committee present who would like to give any comment? Colleague chairperson? Chairperson, the, the chairperson. Uh, chairperson. Yes. All right, uh, secretariat. Um, maybe the, Mr. Skumbusa will speak on behalf of the chair because I, I know there was an apology for the chair um, um, yeah. when we start the proceedings, chair. Okay, as it all like Bob Skumbusa. Yes, uh, thanks very much. Combine uh, my, the chair's uh, input because she has written something, but we 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 we, we share the same. Uh, View. So it will be a combination of uh, the input of the chair and the whip uh, in, in one. So we witness uh, President uh, Ramaphosa advocating for the temporary terms uh, on other medical interventions. In his engagements with the President Macron, Macron during uh, his uh, recent state visit to South Africa. We support the joint initiative by South Africa and India in the World Trade Organization in pursuing a cause for humanity and human rights that every nation should be able to vaccinate its citizens. The, D the SDG uh, provide for health for all. And the initiative by South Africa and India is exactly that temporarily, temporarily waiving the patents will create an opportunity for developing countries with manufacturing ability to produce more COVID-19 vaccines to help Africa and other disadvantaged countries. This is not the time to fold our arms and watch the vaccine apartheid unfold before our eyes. We will add our voice for the good of humanity and urge many partners to support this noble initiative by South Africa and India. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. May, may I check if ever there's any further comments from my 
colleagues. Because we have got... Okay, Honorable Hammonds. Thank you very much. Uh, there's somebody called Mumisa on the platform whose mic is not muted, who's disturbing the, the meeting, uh, Chair. If that person can just be muted. Um, Chair, uh, in supporting what the uh, WIP for International Relations, uh, Dirko, in fact, as, as tabled, we, we as, as the uh, portfolio committee, I think, or let me speak for the ANC component of that, uh, greatly support this uh, call for, a, for, for the waiver uh, to produce, to ensure that we produce enough vaccines to make sure that the human rights issues around universal access to, to vaccines is met. So we want to ask parliament to use all the international platforms at its, at its disposal to uh, obtain the, the consensus in the WTO uh, in the work to get the vaccines, um, the, the TRIPS waiver in place. Thank you, Chair. Recording in progress. Uh, so, okay. Jared, if we can we check have, if ever we have other colleagues. We have Mr. McPherson, Mr. Yes. Mulder, Mr. Cuthbert, and Ms. Masani Chair. Okay. L let me just check. Uh, have we uh, checked if ever the other portfolios, we actually did have the chair or this, the whip present who would like to say something before we take the members of the committee? because we look at the way forward because uh, there's lots of information shared, uh, not a lot of time for us to be able to engage or discuss that we have now. Um, are there any further comments, Secretary, are there any further comments from the other portfolios before we take members of the committee? Chair, we have received comments from, from, from International Relations, Chair, as... Um, yeah. Portfolio Committee on Health is not in attendance because they are having busy with public hearings, Chair. So then yeah. we, and we have a, received a comments from Mrs. Herman's Chair, so I would assume that we may proceed into the questions of clarification if other parties wish to comment as well, Chair. Okay, great. Uh, honorable members, I think we actually do have to take those. Uh, the, you, you gave three, three names. Chair, as, as uh, indicated, Mr. McPherson, Followed by Mr. Mulder, followed by Mr. Cuthbert's chair. McPherson, Honorable Mulder. Okay. In that order, Honorable Members, McPherson. Thank you. Um, and just to help you out, Chairperson, um, and remind you, there's no such thing as a committee whip, or a DERCO whip, or a DTIC whip. There's ANC whips and DA whips, but there's no committee whip. So I'm not sure why we were taking the views of committee whips because they don't exist. Uh, that being said, I find it rather interesting uh, that the gentleman from Durko, uh, and there's been some very colorful language used today in that we can't fold our arms, as he said, we must do something, you know, the words uh, vaccine apartheid have been used, vaccine nationalism used extensively today. Um, and, you know, well, the truth is, is that we have sat on our arms and our hands and we've done nothing about vaccines. Um, while the rest of the world was uh, vac buying vaccines and producing vaccines and putting money into research and development to vaccines, we were picking out clothing items for people to buy uh, and measuring the temperature of chickens uh, and whether that they would be acceptable for sale or not. And that's what we were totally preoccupied with. Well, I'm not saying we, I'll say the executive, were totally preoccupied with beating and shambocking citizens and telling them what they could and couldn't do instead of actually buying vaccines, instead of putting money into research and development like many other countries did. So I think that there's a bit of a, a false outrage that's being portrayed here today. Uh, and I really wonder, Minister Patel, if we'd be having this discussion at all if South Africa had done 
uh, and the government had done its constitutional right, uh, its constitutional obligation to provide healthcare services for South Africans uh, and its duty to have procured vaccines when it should have, that they should have been paying the, uh, the uh, deposits on time. Uh, instead, they missed them. Uh, the government seems to have stopped talking about COVAX altogether. That was supposed to be the silver bullet uh, for vaccines. And yet we haven't received a single COVAX uh, vaccine uh, to date. So, you know, I, you know, I, I sort of find myself in a place of a bewilderment that there seems to be this false equivalence between you know, trying to abrogate our responsibilities and the complete uh, failure of leadership by the executive to procure vaccines um, and somehow blaming it on everybody else, nationalism, apartheid, call it what you what you like. Uh, so I, I, I really think that that's a problem. The second thing I'd like to ask, Minister, is what is the trade-off between TRIPS waverings and the private sector putting money into uh, into research and development because that's the lifeblood of any uh, sort of solution to the problems uh, that one faces in a historic pandemic like this. How 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 is intellectual property essentially still going to be guarded uh, and rewarded um, and and not seemingly uh, you know, disposed of uh, to uh, to to see this waiver come through. Thanks. Thank you very much. With it, please, without much preambles, can we take the next uh, speaker? Honourable, um, it, was it Cadvet, Secretary? It was Mulder first. Mulder, chair. It was honourable. Oh, honourable Mulder, then Cadvet. Thank you, Chair, um, Honourable Minister, colleagues. Um, I will be short with, with, without uh, repeating what uh, Honourable um, McPherson just said. Uh, there's lots of, of could have beens. Um, I agree that South Africa has got, can only blame itself for not being able to manufacture vaccines. We used to have the facility and the ability to do that and that we could have done more. South Africa could have done better. Government could have done better. But here we are now, and as far as the waiver is concerned, I think um, it is important that, so that we get into a situation where we would be able to manufacture vaccines. Um, it is uneventably the, 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 the fact at the moment, but Question that remains with me, I can't help to think, and I want to ask Honorable Mr. Patel this. We've seen the scale of corruption taking place in government, even with, with COVID-19 funds, and even in the Department of Health at the moment. Would South Africa be able to support the local manufacturing of vaccines, and who's going to manufacture it, and who will benefit from it? The question remains. Thank you, Chair. Honourable Kathbeth. Thanks very much, Chair. Just in addition to what Mr. McPherson had to say, um, could we not have used the money that was stolen by Digital Vibes, by the Deco family, by the rest of the cadres who decided to take money from the public purse for their own benefit to invest that into research and development of our own vaccine in South Africa. And that question still remains because those cases are still outstanding. And should we not be trying to recoup that money to try and pump it into the effort of procuring more vaccines? And secondly, um, chairperson, what is the minister's position on allowing the private sector to get involved? Because obviously they're far more efficient and effective at delivering services, have much wider logistics rollout platforms in what government itself does. I mean, we've seen we only have several hundred thousand vaccines that have been rolled out up until this point. And, you know, is he willing to actually, you know, come forward and say, well, you know, centralizing the procurement of vaccines and the rollout of vaccines has been a massive failure. 
And we now need to call on the private sector to get involved and come and help us sort out the shambles that we have created so that we are able to not only protect lives but livelihoods and return back to you know some sense of economic normality. Uh, Kabeth, uh, did cut. Let's take uh, the next one. Is it Msane? Yes, Chair, it is. Thank you, yes, Chair. Go ahead, um, I, have, I have quite a few questions. Um, and we have to say that we support the waiver. However, we can get, we can produce as many vaccines as we want without a proper rollout plan all this will just transpire to be waste, wasted efforts, Chairperson, because we've seen with the little vaccines that we get, it does not um, get to the final user, which is the people that it needs to get to. So without a proper rollout plan, this is useless. Um, Chairperson, what is the manufacturing capacity of Aspen, which is currently producing your, your J&J &J, uh, vaccine. Also, India is currently um, producing or manufacturing um, the Sputnik. Why is South Africa not looking at such bilateral agreements? Uh, meanwhile, while we're waiting for this process to take shape. Also, Chairperson, apart from Espen and BioVac, um, does South Africa have the required uh, resources and raw materials to manufacture this, uh, this COVID-19 vaccine? And where um, does South Africa um, um, plan to, to get the supply of the raw materials for the, the, the vaccine? Because as you may know that with the supply and demand being so high for these raw materials or vaccines, it's also now a war of the richest versus the poorest on getting raw materials in order to manufacture. That's why that most um, international companies, uh, especially America and the rest are refusing to 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 allow um, for other countries to manufacture vaccines because now there is a fight on raw materials of uh, manufacturing these vaccines. And then uh, I heard the minister of DTIC saying that we are planning on upgrading machinery in order to start manufacturing. Um, what duration is given? Because should this be approved in the June assembly, um, how long would it take South Africa to start getting the machinery to start manufacturing? Because you only mentioned Aspen and, and BioVac, and I, I'm not sure that their capacity is, is big enough. Apart from that, how much has uh, South Africa allocated um, into getting the manufacturing of these vaccines since we have seen a lot of the COVID-19 funds have been looted by politicians. I, I, I really don't see South Africa having enough funds to, to convert or to, to, to build up machinery to uh, manufacture enough vaccines to vaccinate the population of South Africa. And with the little research that we've done, we find that um, the Caribbean countries are not in complete support of this waiver. And the reason being is they are all looking now at the Cuban vaccine. Um, my, the previous speakers have highlighted uh, at the fact that why is South Africa not using the funds that are busy being looted in developing our own vaccine? Meanwhile, yes, we, we are looking for the waiver. But with the little money that we had, we could have um, started a process of developing our vaccine. And with the access that we have, because we are saying that South Africa is leading the African vaccine production, we've got the African CDC. Why are we not pushing for, if not then South Africa, the African continent 
to develop its own vaccine. Because as we say now that the AU is in support of the waiver, but you cannot go as the AU to the World Trade Organization, you go as individual African countries. And how many of these African countries has South Africa lobbied um, to support this waiver of, of this trips, um, of these trips? Um, can we also agree, Chairperson, um, now speaking to the, the Deputy Minister of Durko and DTIC that multilateral bodies such as the BRICS have not been very beneficial when it comes to um, the well-being and saving lives of their member states. Because looking at the, the current um, agreement that we are talking about, um, Brazil is not in support, but it's part of BRICS. Um, Russia is under EU. Um, you know, so uh, it, it looks a bit shaky that these countries we are in multilateral agreements which are only beneficial when it comes to serving the interests of capital and, and, and not the interest of, life, of, of livelihoods of the people. Also, Mr. Mc, McPherson mentioned um, the COVAX pr program. This COVAX program is really not serving um, South Africa at all. And I, I, I really don't understand why would we want to be part of such a program? Um, it, basically what it tells us, it tells us that South Africa is willing to spend or engage in so many programs that are non-beneficial to itself in order to uh, build relations with countries that are so nationalists when it comes to the, the vaccine program. So, Chairperson, if we can Please get a clear up, indication... Sorry. Yeah, I am, I am. Mm. If we can get a clear indication of how has this COVAX program assisted South Africa or the African continent, because we're going to be told they have delivered vaccines to Ghana, they've delivered vaccines, but South Africa in particular, and we, we do not expect um, Germany and all these other countries to support this waiver because they have funded the COVAX program more than anyone. The EU has funded the COVAX program more than anyone, which was supposed to be the lifesaver of the whole world during this pandemic. And then my last point, Chair, um, we, we were supposed to be in, in we were actually in, in the Interparliamentary Union last week. It had it, uh, it's, it's 142 uh, second, um, 142nd Assembly last week. And let me tell you, Chairperson, um, for, for Durko to come here and, and, and make these bodies as if they are lifesavers of this country is nothing but a waste. There was no participation from South Africa in such bodies where countries were debating. Countries were debating vaccines. Countries were, that was a greatest platform for South Africa to go and, and advance this agenda. But because of lack of interest and because we have excess money that we can waste as South Africa, we go and we pump money in bodies such as interparliamentary unions and we send delegates where no one goes and no one participates, Chairperson. I must say that it is very disturbing for South Africa, even Durko, to come and mention these interparliamentary bodies which are not serving the interests of South Africans. Thank you very much. Um, can I check, uh, Secretariat, uh, if ever there are any further hands? We have because I know we don't have much time. We have Mr. Yeah. Faber yes, and Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Swart, please. Uh, Mr. Favor. Faber and, Swart. and Mrs. Swart. Mrs. Swart. Okay. Thank you, Chairperson. Yes, sir. Thanks, Chairperson. Yes, Chairperson, Minister Patel was saying that it would take approximately three years for most citizens to be vaccinated with this whole TRIPS agreement of starting to create vaccines, etc. The issue for me is that Europe will be vaccinated fully by November. So, you know, by November, we would not even have started vaccinated people under the age of 60 in South Africa. Now, that's disgusting to actually just think about all the money that's being 
um, gone wasted by the corruption line since the last year. And I would like to know, like, if that money can be recuperated, and can we not then get bigger orders in as well, as Europe will already be finished by November with vaccinating all their citizens, surely, um, if the European Union and these people can do that, we don't have to wait for another three years till all our people in South Africa and Africa should be vaccinated. So I would like to know what Mr. Patel would say about that. Thanks. Can we take the next one? Secretariat? Mrs. Swart, Chair. Mrs. Swart. Thank you, Chair. We appreciate the presentation to our two committees on this important subject. This exercise is a good test for the implementation of our economic diplomacy by our two departments working um, collaboratively to ensure that South Africa deploy its soft power to the fullest. Whether or not there are institutional mechanisms in place for the DTIC and DERCO to deliver economic diplomacy for the achievement of government's priorities as provided for in the MTSF. If so, to what extent has that played itself beyond the TRIPS waiver discussed before the WTO, especially at bilateral levels of engagement? What is the ratio of foreign economic representatives to the DERCO transferred officials deployed at South Africa missions abroad? To what extent are missions resident in our country being engaged by the two departments on the TRIPS matter, in particular, and any other trade or investment issues in general? Can we safely say we have a South Africa inclusive approach to economic diplomacy? Thank you, Chair. Can you take further hands? Are there still extra hands, uh, Secretariat? Because I know that uh, we do have a tight time frame. We have actually have to look at the way forward as well Chair? Uh, in terms of our engagement today. Secretariat? Chair, we have no further hands, Chair. Okay. Can we then actually invite the uh, ministers, deputy minister and the departments? Uh, minister Patel? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, uh, Honorable Mpanza, I think, makes a really important point around urgency that we need to move with, uh, with speed to get the, the matter of, of um, supply uh, increased. And I'd like to appreciate the support uh, that he expresses for the waiver. Honorable Hermans um, has uh, also, can I uh, appreciate the support uh, she's expressed for the waiver request and uh, the commitment, um, or at least the call, uh, to use all the platforms uh, uh, that uh, the South African Parliament uh, has available uh, to put forward the arguments uh, around the waiver, uh, uh, by which I mean uh, platforms elsewhere in the world. Uh, so appreciate that very much. Uh, Honorable McPherson, um, I should indicate uh, yet again, has not missed the opportunity to score political points at a time when there are very significant uh, issues at stake. But let's deal with some of these issues. Um, vaccine nationalism is not a colorful language used by ourselves. It's language that is used across the discussions. Everybody recognizes the importance of avoiding vaccine nationalism. Uh, the developing countries say that. The developed countries say that. So perhaps uh, uh, we could um, urge Honorable McPherson to join the world uh, uh, and, and come out of the little isolation uh, that he clearly is digging himself into. Um, we, there is something important that we, we need to, um, to address, which is how to ensure that a facility, a research and development uh, 
critical to innovation in medicine and in many other parts of, of life uh, is sustained and supported. So let's look at the facts. In this particular instance, uh, just about every vaccine that has been developed has benefited enormously from public funds, resources that have been mobilized by governments, by the public sector uh, in, uh, at uh, enormous levels, um, in some cases unprecedented for an effort of its nature and the, the limited period that was available. So billions of dollars uh, have been mobilized across the world uh, to, to support R&D. Um, in many cases, developing countries have contributed, in the case of South Africa, for example, a number of those, these vaccines have been in trials here in South Africa, uh, stage two trials where South Africans uh, participated uh, to assist those companies to ensure that the uh, the R&D, which is the, the one stage of it, uh, is, is supplemented by the human trials that can give the feedback to indicate the efficacy and the value of the vaccines. So when we take the financial and the non-financial support that has been given, not only by the shareholders of uh, the, the big uh, pharmaceutical companies, but by societies, by governments, uh, it seems to us to be a compelling case when so many people are dying uh, that indeed uh, the intellectual property should be made available. Now, it's a point that has been made in, in the discussions we've had with many developed countries where even governments in developed countries recognize that uh, the pharmaceutical companies are making their margin at the moment in wealthier economies. They're getting the the, uh, the price they're getting uh, their return and the intellectual property waiver is temporary it's time bound and it would enable a scaling up of this across the world our responsibility as governments and as public representatives is to ensure that we save lives in these cases so i think um, we are mindful of the importance of supporting and sustaining R&D that we are able through uh, our efforts to, uh, to encourage more uh, private and public funds to be put into uh, research and development uh, because even with the current uh, vaccines, more R&D is needed so that as we have mutations and um, we have uh, uh, new strains of the virus, that humanity, our scientists, our um, uh, medical personnel are able to respond effectively to these. So we, we believe that we, we uh, are seeking to strike a careful balance between the importance of research and development, fostering it, supporting it, and at the same time having a um, capacity to save human lives. And this for us is important. Uh, Honorable McPherson and um, uh, Sani has raised the issue of COVAX. COVAX was a global effort to pull uh, both developed and developing country uh, buying power so that a number of different uh, pharmaceutical companies could, uh, could have the guarantee that there would be off-take commitments. In other words, if they make the big breakthrough, uh, that someone would buy these products. In the case of COVAX, uh, there have been uh, one significant challenge, and that is the vaccine that it had hoped would have the greatest uh, volume availability, which is the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine, which has proven to be very effective uh, in dealing with uh, COVID, in providing uh, the, uh, the immunity to COVID, was regrettably not that successful. I am told by uh, colleagues who, who are more knowledgeable than I am uh, that the, the uh, investigations and the studies have shown that they're not as effective against the strain, which is called the 501v2 strain, that was first identified in South Africa. 
And so that was not uh, contemplated at the time of uh, uh, the COVAX uh, arrangement. But COVAX, of course, also have, has access to other vaccines, but in smaller quantities. Honorable McPherson makes a meal of um, the issues around had only South Africa placed orders uh, earlier, I would uh, point him to the uh, discussions and the very public spat between the European Union and the United Kingdom on issues of vaccine availability. And some quite revealing comments that have been made by heads of state uh, and uh, uh, leaders in the European Union and in the United Kingdom about the true market for, for vaccines. And it's not only about who places orders when. There are a range of other matters which uh, I, I will leave. The public record speaks loudly to those. And the European Union and the UK have said uh, quite a bit on the record and publicly on those matters. I doubt really that um, we could unite as South Africans around uh, this matter, that there would be disagreements on other matters. But when the discussion is on the waiver, not the other issues, uh, that uh, as parliamentarians and as um, uh, public uh, uh, figures that there would be support for a compelling moral request that South Africa and India have made that in the light of this enormous loss of life across the world, uh, that humanity pools its scientific knowledge and uh, makes available uh, through acts of global solidarity vaccines to more people across the world by increasing the supply capacity. Honorable Mulder, um, thank you for uh, recognizing the importance uh, link between the waiver and the manufacture of vaccines. And uh, you asked the question uh, around uh, corruption, which has also come up elsewhere. And I should make the point that uh, a waiver would enable private sector players in different countries to utilize the intellectual property and the underlying uh, technologies uh, to, to produce. Uh, we had an opportunity at the University of Pretoria on Friday when there was a, uh, a, a hybrid um, uh, conference addressed by President Ramaphosa and President Macron but also by a number of scientists from South Africa and, and medical regulators. And they pointed to a number of issues and what came out there should make every South African enormously proud when people from across the world were recognizing uh, both in those discussions and in the bilateral meetings, uh, the capacity that South Africa has been able to develop through Aspen and BioVac with these kind of um, facilities, it takes a number of years to set up uh, from scratch. In the case of Aspen, uh, this was a facility that before COVID, the South African government had worked with the company to provide them with the necessary support through uh, the Section 12I facility in our tax code. Uh, and the DTIC had, um, had collaborated with the company in enabling a state-of-the-art factory to be built at the time where nobody anticipated COVID would come about. And that facility, which was announced by the president at the investment conference uh, in, I think it was 2018 or 2019, but certainly before uh, the COVID uh, challenge had hit the world, uh, that facility was then capable of being repurposed. And I've heard heads of state uh, from uh, different countries, uh, from the African Union, uh, from uh, Europe and elsewhere, speak very, very highly of Aspen's capacity and uh, what Aspen is doing. Uh, Honorable Msani, um, Aspen's current capacity is 300 million uh, doses that it can... Minister, are you cutting? I hope this is... Maybe you can remove your, your, your video. Your, your actually is cutting. You can uh, close your video, maybe it will improve your chair. cutting. Uh, chair, we don't have a problem, Chair. I think the challenge may be on your side. We can hear the you minister clearly. You can close your video, Minister. 
Chairperson, uh, the problem's Everybody. definitely with you. We're all hearing the minister exactly fine. Okay. Thank you, Go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Arben, Honorable Hermans. So, um, so, so really what we seek, what we're hearing from foreigners is enormous um, respect that they have for the capacity uh, that has been demonstrated to date by Aspen. Uh, I, I have now heard the German Chancellor speak directly about Aspen. I've heard President Macron speaking about um, Aspen. I've heard a number of African Union heads of state speak about um, uh, Aspen. I've had ministers calling me trying to set up meetings, ministers from other African countries uh, setting up meetings with Aspen so that um, they can share some of their know-how as other African countries too seek to expand um, their capacity to produce vaccines. And we've taken the view as South Africa that we will encourage our um, pharmaceutical companies to be as supportive to building capacity on the African continent. We're in this together and we need to work together on this matter. So um, uh, this is something that we, we want to open up much more honorable Mulder. It's not a, a matter only for governments. It's one where private sector players in developing countries would be able to play this role. But of course, what has become clear is that it needs that partnership. And so uh, we, we are ready to, to support within the, uh, the capacity of government uh, on these areas. Um, Honorable uh, uh, Cuthbert has raised questions that I think uh, he, he would be some of the, the, the issues that I've addressed. But I, I should make the point that obviously, and it's a point that someone else has also made, we don't solve all of our problems only through a waiver. And we don't solve all of our problems only through the supply of vaccines. So there are many other things that we must also get right, including uh, in South Africa and across the African continent and elsewhere in developing countries to build the systems of rollout. And those honorable members that have pointed to that uh, make a valid point that that is an important part. It's um, connecting the supply of vaccines with um, citizens across the world who need those vaccines. And um, uh, in, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, colleagues that are responsible for the rollout would be able to provide more detail, uh, but there is a partnership between the private sector and the public sector in that regard. Um, on the issues raised by Honorable Msani, thank you for the support for the waiver, Honorable Msani. Uh, you've uh, raised the issue of the rollout plan, which I've indicated uh, other colleagues will be able to provide more detailed information on it. Uh, but uh, uh, what we're seeking to do now is we're rolling out principally at this point the um, Pfizer vaccine, which is uh, built off the technologies by a German company called BioNTech, uh, whom we are also in discussion at the moment with. And um, we are awaiting for the regulatory unblocking of the J&J vaccine. Uh, here's an interesting example of the challenges of vaccine production. The um, drug substance uh, that is used for the manufacture of J&J has been produced in a um, establishment, a factory in the United States, in Baltimore. And uh, they had problems at one point with maintaining quality standards uh, in this American factory. Um, and uh, that has resulted in a pause while the regulators look to make sure that that, um, that raw material uh, contamination has been properly addressed and, and resolved. And in fact, um, in the course of those discussions, uh, J&J has also asked the South African company uh, to, to provide technical support to the American supplier. Because we're in this together, we've got to find wherever we have good people, technically skilled people, uh, we need to try to share them because uh, lives, an American life is as important as a South African mm -hmm. life, which is as important as a Ghanaian life or a Russian life or a Chinese life. Life is precious and the collaboration and the sharing of human know-how across the world is, is fundamental. On the issues of uh, Sputnik, uh, this is a matter that um, 
the Minister of Health is dealing with uh, through the, the regulators. Uh, we, we have a process in South Africa through, the, uh, through SAPRA, which is the health uh, products regulator, that they require information on all vaccines, uh, including vaccines that are manufactured in South Africa. So um, in a number of cases, that request has been um, uh, shared and uh, information as it is received by SAPRA and as it goes through the processes uh, and are certified within enable production. So um, <clears throat> that's, uh, we've got to make sure obviously that uh, when production is enabled in South Africa, it's off um, uh, drug um, formulations that have been uh, approved by the regulator. On the resources uh, for Aspen and BioVac, it was a very interesting conversation that we had with um, the French delegation and the German delegation last week, uh, in which the CEO of one of our big pharmaceutical companies said that finance is not the fundamental problem. It's really getting the technology transfer and, and um, uh, the offtake commitments. In other words, that countries commit to buying over the next two, three years, these vaccines that are produced, because of that, a business case is developed and investors and banks and others will easily come in. Our development finance institutions can support and so on. So we are looking to find a, um, a, 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 a model that combines the best of private um, uh, fundraising and uh, public fundraising. But the key to unlocking it uh, is the technology transfers. And we're dealing now with that, um, including through the the discussion uh, at the WTO. But the upgrading of machinery, um, there are a number of, uh, uh, there is current capacity in, in uh, Aspen and in, in BioVac. Some of this will need to be enhanced when we want to increase the numbers beyond what is currently uh, possible. Typically, these take many years for machines to be made and uh, customized for establishments. We're looking at some new and innovative ideas with um, uh, other countries. Uh, and I'm sure the companies concerned will make an announcement as and when uh, they've concluded uh, these discussions. So it's not a budget item that DTIC says, here's the money. It's really trying to find the, um, the viable case for the production of these. And if it requires some support by government, of course, we will uh, within uh, the resources make that available. But the companies themselves have said the key, the area that they really want us to focus on is the area of um, uh, facilitating and supporting efforts at technology transfer and the, the offtake commitments. COVAX, COVAX is an example of an offtake commitment. If COVAX could agree, as we, we, we wish them to agree, that they will take a certain portion of the vaccines that they buy globally. They'll buy it from African producers. It will enormously enhance the business case for uh, the production of vaccines on the African continent. On the Caribbean countries, Honorable Msani, uh, a number of them are supporting uh, South, South Africa and India, but they are not yet co-sponsors. There are two types of um, uh, 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 support that can be given. The first is people who formally sign off on the actual text on the table from South Africa and, and India, and uh, they are called co-sponsors. And the second one is people in the TRIPS Council, who um, uh, very much like in Parliament, who, who, who um, uh, stand up and indicate that their delegation supports the request for uh, discussions on the waiver. So it's not that we don't have any support in the Caribbean, um, but we are now hoping that we can upgrade the support uh, to co-sponsorship. Uh, have we lobbied uh, African countries? Yes, uh, quite extensively. Durko has been really exceptionally strong in um, mobilizing the support networks. President Ramaphosa has himself played a very, very active role in, in all of this um, previously as chairperson of the African Union until February uh, this year and subsequently as the champion, the AU champion 
uh, around vaccines. Um, and he's put together uh, not only teams that have engaged other African countries, but he himself uh, has engaged other uh, African heads of state. Uh, and so it goes beyond uh, just our normal work. We've put uh, huge effort. And that's why we have this absolutely extraordinary uh, coalition of countries, uh, something that no one uh, would have anticipated before October last year, that within what for WTO purposes is, a, is quite a short period of time that we have such a significant group of countries that now support uh, the waiver. On um, uh, individual members of BRICS, the, of course, uh, on many issues, the BRICS countries would have similar views. On some issues, they may have different views. It would not be the first issue. Uh, BRICS doesn't mean there's agreement on every single issue. It's like any coalition that there would be issues that unite the coalition and you work on those issues and uh, you try to build and expand these with time. Um, uh, Honorable uh, Faber, the, the question that you've raised around the period that Europe will have full vaccination, um, we of course uh, the Europeans and the rest of the world, everybody recognizes that we're in uncertain territory. Nobody knows where the booster shots will need to be uh, available on an ongoing basis. And those booster shots would have to be um, produced in the same facilities that produce the original vaccine. We don't know whether new strains and new mu mutations of the vaccine will require completely new types of um, uh, vaccines beyond what have currently been uh, approved. There are some very exciting and interesting different technologies being um, explored, and some of them are now at the stage of human trials. They, they differ uh, from the, um, uh, the, um, uh, the current um, uh, technologies that are utilized, and um, uh, if they are successful, they may prove to be even more effective. But these are things that has to go through the, um, uh, the, the normal processes uh, of scientific um, validation and then regulatory approval. Um, uh, of course, uh, the, the, the order situation is constrained uh, fundamentally by uh, the supply constraint. And I should, should indicate, Honorable Faber, that one of the difficulties that many developing countries have had, because bear in mind the statistic that we use that um, 75 percent of the vaccines that have been administered have gone just to 10 countries and when you look at that those have tended to be countries that are quite um, uh, quite wealthy um, by and large that's been the biggest uh, off takers and um, in in many cases it's been a concern that governments have expressed from developing countries across the world that developing countries will be given access to the vaccine, but they are placed at the end of the queue. Uh, the vaccines would be promised for the, um, the last quarter of 2021, uh, or it would be promised for 2022. And in many cases, pharmaceutical companies do this, not only based on the price that would be paid, but it does seem to us, and this is a concern that we've expressed uh, in the discussions that they do so, looking at future long-term business on other medical products uh, from those countries. And they look at markets that have the greatest ability to pay. Uh, these issues uh, of, of um, uh, equitable sharing has also come out in the discussion between uh, the European Union and the United Kingdom. So I think many countries that have placed orders... Minister, finding your connection and you'll have to round up, Minister. Thank you. Um, and I think that that largely covers the questions that have been asked. Honorable Swartz have raised issues around the uh, FERs and uh, the, uh, uh, the broader inclusive approach. And I think it is an area that um, we believe we've made uh, uh, very solid strides and uh, we are engaging those missions both in South Africa and in Geneva, where we believe uh, it is necessary to get them on board.
So may I wrap up, uh, Chairperson, by indicating that um, this is an extraordinary time we live in. It's extraordinary effort. Uh, parties will have their points of view about different things, but uh, this is one issue that I think South Africans can unite around, uh, the question of uh, the waiver request. And I would hope um, that we get uh, the full support of everybody whilst recognizing on other issues there will be different points of view. And that we can, Recording in can, progress. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chairperson, uh, for the opportunity to respond to the questions. Thank you very much, Minister. I've just picked up that it's my side that it's terrible. Yours actually is going excellently. So let me actually ask that uh, we actually agree that we do support South Africa and India temporary waiver proposal on COVID-19 vaccines. And I think uh, what might be important, we would actually secretariat on our side and just uh, issue a statement by the end of the meeting uh, just to conclude the process. So I think uh, we will actually leave it at that and uh, our meeting will actually conclude on the basis of the interaction that we have actually had and uh, welcome all those who are actually able to connect. And uh, unless maybe there's something that we need to actually to look at, Secretariat, can we check uh, the portfolio committee uh, DTIC tomorrow meeting? If you can actually just give us some detail to that and thank all those who have connected for their involvement, participation and connection. Secretariat? Chair, in, in terms of tomorrow's meeting, we will get to receive a briefing by the Competition Commission on its um, strategic and annual performance plans, Chair, for the 2021-22 financial year. Then we will also consider the outstanding minutes and we will consider the program for the third quarter going forward, Chair. Okay. May, may we then actually appreciate and thank all those who have connected and may I actually, because of the uh, pressure of time, uh, stay uh, agent as the meeting. Can I say our meeting is agent? Colleagues, thanks very much for being able to make time for us to actually uh, get involved on in this process. Thank you very much. Our meeting is Thank agent. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, we will communicate with you, Chair, with regard to the okay. statement during the course of today. Wonderful. Great. No, thank, thank you very much.